The next automation tools is the Kibana. Kibana is an open source tool for data visualization and monitoring. Kibana is simple to install and to use. Kibana is part of the ELK stack, which is a collection of the tools uh, like the Elasticsearch and Logstash and Kibana. Logstash extracts information from collected logs, network or application logs, from different sources and stores them on Elasticsearch. Kibana is the visualization engine for the stack. A fourth common component is Bits, which is a data shipper. Bits provides a way of exporting data from any type of system to Logstash using what an agent. Agents in the infrastructure capture data and ship it to the Logstash. It's a common misconception that Kibana collects data directly from network, but it does not. It uses the other stack members to do the collection. You can use Kibana to set up dashboards and alerts and to do analytics based on parsing rules that you define in this figure, as you can see in this figure. It's a tool focused on log data processing. Kibana often powerful visualization tools such as uh, histograms and pi charts, but it is uh, by far most used in integration with Elasticsearch as a visualization and query engine for collected logs. This is the Kibana search dashboard. The next automation tool is the Grafana. Grafana is an open source tool for data visualization, analytics, and monitoring. It can be deployed either on-premises or managed in the cloud. There is also a software as a service offering available. Whereas Kibana focuses on log data, Grafana is focused on metrics. You can use it to set up dashboards alerts and graphs from network data. You might use it, for example, to visualize the following CPU utilization, memory utilization, IO means input output operations per second, remaining disk space. Okay, this figure shows an example of a Grafana dashboard that shows these metrics and more. Grafana does not store or collect data. It receives data from other sources where these type of metrics are stored, typically time series databases, for example, in Flux database. And however, it can also integrate with other database types such as PostgreSQL and cloud monitoring systems such as AWS CloudWatch in order for the data to be populated in these databases, you must use other tools such as SNMP. Because it is able to pull data from many sources, Grafana can provide a consolidated view that other tools fail to provide. Some may not consider Grafana a network automation solution, but its monitoring capability capabilities, which you can use to track errors and application and equipment behaviors, along with its alerting capabilities, earn it a spot on this list. The next automation tool is the Splunk. Splunk is a distributed system that aggregates, parses, and analyzes data. Like Grafana, it focuses on monitoring, alerting, and data visualization. There are three different Splunk offerings, a free version, an enterprise version, and a software-as-a-service cloud version. Although known in the networking industry for its security capabilities, Splunk is on the list of automation tools due to its data ingestion capabilities. It can ingest many different types of data, including the following network-related types. Windows data like registry, event log, and file system data. Linux data, syslog data and statistics. SNMP, syslog, NetFlow or IPFix, and application logs. The Splunk architecture consists of three components. First, Splunk forwarder. Second, Splunk indexer. And third, Splunk search head. 
The Splunk Forwarder is a software agent that is installed on endpoints to collect and forward logs to the Splunk indexer. The Splunk Forwarder is needed only when the endpoint that is producing the logs does not send them automatically, as in the case of an application. In the case of a router, you could point the syslog destination directly at the indexer bypassing the need for a forwarder. There are two types of Splunk forwarders, universal forwarder and heavy forwarder. About the universal forwarder, the most commonly used type is the universal forwarder, which is more lightweight than its counterpart. Universal forwarder do not do any pre-processing but send the data as they collect it, that is raw data. This results in more transmitted data. About the heavy forwarder. Heavy forwarder perform parsing and send only index data to the indexer. They reduce transmitted data and decentralize the processing. However, this type of forwarder requires host machines to have processing capabilities. The Splunk indexer transforms collected data into events and store them. The transformations can entail many different operations such as applying timestamps, adding source information, or doing user-defined operation, for example, filtering unwanted logs. The Splunk indexer works with universal forwarder, with heavy forwarders. The Splunk indexer only stores the events and does not perform any transformation. You can use multiple Splunk indexer to improve ingestion and transformation performance. The Splunk search head provides a GUI, a CLI, and an API for users to search and query for a specific information. In the case of a distributed architecture with multiple indexers, the search head queries several indexers and aggregates the result before displaying the result back to the user. In addition, you can define alerts based on received data and generate reports. This figure shows an example of a Splunk dashboard that shows software variation among the a firewall installation base along with the number of devices and their respective logical context configuration. The next automation tool is Python. Although Python is not an automation tool uh, per uh, purse, actually, it provides the building blocks to make an automation tool. Many of the automation tools described in this video are actually built using Python, for example, Ansible. Other programming language could also be used for automation, but Python has a lot of pre-built libraries that make it a perfect candidate. The following are some examples of Python libraries used to automate networking tasks. For example, Selenium, Open PYXL, and PyAutoGUI, and Paramico, and Netmico. The main advantage of Python is that it can work with any device type, any platform, any vendor, and any system with any version. However, its advantage is also its drawback. The many possible customization can make it complex and hard to maintain. When using Python, you are actually building a tool to some extent instead of using a pre-built one. This can make it rather troublesome. This example defines a device with all its com connection properties, such as credential and ports, as you could have multiple devices. This example uses the NetMiko Python module to connect to the defined device and issue the show IP interface brief command, as you can see here, followed by the Cisco CLI commands to create a new interface VLAN 10. Okay, and then here with the IP address 10.10.10.1, okay, this is the IP address. Finally, the example issued the same command as in the beginning to verify that the change was applied. You can see this example defined the device type. However, the Python library supports a huge variety of platforms. 
in the event that your platform is not supported, you could use another library and still use Python. This is an example of the flexibility mentioned earlier. A similar principle applies to the command issued, as you can replace the ones shown in this example with any desired command. This figure sh uh, shows a sample execution of the uh, script that we did before. Here you can see before uh, our configuration, we didn't have the interface VLAN 10. Now after configuration, we can see that we have VLAN 10 with 10.10.10.1 .10 .10 IP address.